Welcome to another video of Excel Athlete Fitness. Today we're going to make a bar chart that color codes itself based upon the values in the data range. So what we're going to use as our example is here you can see a table and it's got 12 athletes and there is some data from three different fitness tests. In addition to that there is a, a second table which has the standards. So uh, what is classified as needing work, what's on target and what's world class. So um, to make this bar graph and make it interesting we need to first put in some data validation. Click data, data validation and select list. Inside the list I want to choose these three options. So now what we should see is you can select yo-yo distance, top speed, or one rep max chin. Just expand that out a little bit. Alright, so if I want to be able to select which test gets drawn on the, on the graph, what would be the easiest way to do that is to pull across the data that we're looking at. And we haven't used this particular lookup version before. We've used H, uh, VLOOKUP, but this time we're going to use HLOOKUP. What HLOOKUP does is it identifies something in the top row of a data set and returns values in the rows beneath it. So we want to look up this value. We need to lock that. I need to look it up in this table. I want to pull out the value which is in row number two and I want it to be an exact match. So that'll work for me but unfortunately if I did that what I'd have to do would be to edit every single row. Change that one to three, that one to four etc. If you're using a very large data table, that's going to take you a long time. So there's a little trick you can use, which is very useful in these circumstances. And that is another function called rows. What rows will do is it will tell you how many rows there are between one point and another. So if I select F3, F4, and I close the brackets, and if I put a lock on the 3, what will happen is that will increment for us. So if I highlight this bottom one here and hit F9, it'll tell us 13. And that means that there are 13 rows between G3 and G15. So rows is a very useful formula. What I also want to pull across is the particular standards that exist for this test because that will allow us to then divide up this data set into those scores which are world class, on target and needing work. Once again I'm going to use HLOOKUP. I want to look up the particular test that we've selected. I want to look it up in this table. And I want to get the value that's in row 2. In this particular instance, because there's only three values, I'm just going to manually change that. Great, so we're on track we are able now to start constructing the real meat behind this trick which is an IF equation. When you do an IF equation basically what it's asking you is if the criteria is met do one thing, if it's not met do another thing. So our formula here I want to pull across into this column in column H all the values that are needing work. So to do so I need to find everything that's less than 55. So equals if this value is 
with me. Is less than 55. Then return that value. Otherwise, I want to do an NA. If I drag that right down, what it's telling us is that everyone in this particular test is above 55. So I'm just going to modify the data and see what happens. And there we go. So we know the formula is working. We'll do the other end of the spectrum now because if the result is greater than our world class standard, then return the value. Otherwise, leave it blank. Looking good. Now, the middle one is the most complicated because it has to have two criteria. Not only does it have to be uh, equal to or greater than 55, it has to be less than 60. So, There's the first criteria. If G4 greater than or equal to 55, and it is, less than or equal to this value then we should bring it across otherwise in a see how that looks if I drag that down what we should find is that each score in column G should only be presented in one of the three columns H, I or J and that looks to be the case. So what I'm going to do now is draw this graph a little bit messy at the moment but we'll fix that as you can see Lines are a different colour at present. So we're on track, but things don't quite look right yet. So what I want to do is just select one of the series. Let's say we can make the world class black. We can make on target blue and need to work make that jump out and make it red. I'm just going to go into the select data section. What I want to do is add some data labels. Also what I want to do Let's add some titles. And one more thing I want to do, I just want to go into format data series. And there's something that really makes these graphs look good is I need to make it 100% overlapped. So now if I select a different result, what I find 
is that the graph changes for me. There's one more thing I want to do, and that is to add a title to this chart. So I'm just going to make it up in cell G1. So the function proper converts whatever text you've selected into proper format. So proper means capital first letter, but everything else lower case. Then I'm going to add a space. And then I'm going to add a particular test result. Select the graph. Click on the cell. And there we go. What I'd like to do is just a few little things to tidy it all up. People don't need to see those things. I usually turn the grid lines off. Make the grid lines on the chart very light or as light as possible. And there we go. You've got a chart that, depending on your fitness test selection and your results, presents each bar as a, a color based upon some criteria that you've set. So, using the if equation to divide up the data into three or as many as you need columns, and then using a 100% overlapped series to make sure that things don't look out of sync with each other. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you soon for another Excel trick for sports scientists.